Hello and welcome to this introduction video of the Perfect Groove software. Perfect Groove is a virtual cutting lathe which emulates the analog lacquer cut in the process of vinyl record production. The software takes your mastered audio tracks and transforms them into a virtual groove, just like the cutter head of a record lathe would carve the groove into a lacquer disc. This virtual groove is analyzed for its geometric properties and the software uses a physical modeling algorithm to trace the groove with a virtual stylus. This again generates information about the needle velocity on playback and allows to create an audible emulation of the virtual playback, so you can pre-listen what your digital master would actually sound like on an analog vinyl record. Overall, the Perfect Groove software is a great tool for cutting engineers who want a quick preview of how their lathe will cut a mastered program. Or if you do mastering for vinyl but don't do the actual cutting, it can help you understand what will happen to your masters on the lathe and it can help you optimize your tracks for the actual analog cut. But let's walk through all this together step by step with the sample project. Every new project begins in the layout mode of the software. Here you can define the track layout and the project parameters. For the demo I ripped the CD version of a live album, which is now split into individual WAV files. Let's grab a bunch of them and drag them onto the track list on the left to add them to the project. Now we have defined our first side of the record and for the demo we'll leave it at that, but you can add more sides when you work on a complete LP or a multi-disc album. You can also rearrange the tracks or move them between sides by dragging and dropping them in the list. As you can see in the waveform display at the bottom, the CD master is pretty loud, so we better use the volume button over here to drop the level of the whole side a bit, otherwise these 22 minutes probably won't fit on one side. Next, let's open the project settings. To get accurate results, the virtual lathe needs to be calibrated, just like an actual analog lathe needs to be calibrated to your studio level. This calibration basically translates the audio levels of the digital master files into the geometric shape and size of the analog groove on the record. Let's assume we've done that already for now, so the next step is to define the format of the record we want to cut. In the record tab you can pick one of the record layouts defined by RIAA or DEAN standard. Or you can use a custom record size and groove layout. We'll choose a standard LP size and 33 RPM playback speed for now. The Groove section contains all parameters that define the groove itself. Here you can find settings for pitch control, land, groove width and depth, lead in, lead out, track markers, everything you can set and tweak on an analog lathe as well. If you are already familiar with the control panel of a Neumann VMS80 lathe, you will probably recognize most of the settings. We'll stick to the defaults here and have a look at the analysis settings now. Once the virtual groove is created, it is analyzed for its geometric properties and is traced with a virtual stylus to obtain information about the stylus velocity on playback. Here you can now define thresholds for these parameters. And whenever a parameter threshold is exceeded, the analysis will raise a warning. With our tracks defined and settings in place, it's now time to actually generate our virtual groove. When I hit the Generate Groove button down here, the software will transform the audio information stored in the tracks into a continuous modulated spiral groove, just like the cutter head of an analog lathe will move and carve the audio information into the lacquer disc. On an analog lathe, this would now take 22 minutes, just the length of the program. In the software, it only takes a couple of seconds to create the virtual groove, analyze it and trace it with the virtual stylus. Once the processing has completed, the most prominent result is the colorful graphical representation of the groove on our previously blank disk image in the center. This illustrates how much the groove will fill our record. In this example, we're now at 91% capacity. In addition, the color of the groove is an indicator for one of two parameters for which we have defined a threshold earlier. When the little ruler icon down here is active, the color is an indicator for the width of the groove. Now the color spectrum ranges from blue for unmodulated grooves to red for too deep or too narrow grooves. We can also switch to the second parameter. Now the color indicates the velocity of the stylus on playback. Again the color spectrum ranges from blue for unmodulated grooves with zero velocity to red for grooves that exceed our set velocity threshold. The detail of the image is not enough to identify individual issues but it will give us a good overview of the overall status of the groove for individual tracks or the whole side. To analyze our groove a bit more in detail, we can look at the list of issues on the right. 
Here we get a list of all the errors and warnings that the analysis has detected. We can sort and filter this list, for example, by relevance, so the most relevant issues are on top. And if we double-click an issue, the playhead will jump to this position in the tracks. The warning I have selected now tells me that the velocity of the stylus exceeds our threshold starting at 56 seconds into the program. The waveform display also contains all warnings and errors as colored regions, so let's zoom in and single out that particular issue region. To gain even more insight on what's going on in the groove, we can also switch the groove view to a more detailed microscopic display. Now at the center of our virtual microscope, we are at the part of the groove that was identified as problematic. And if I move the playhead in the waveform, the groove will rotate along with it. Over here, we can already see some red areas where the velocity becomes too high. If we now listen to this part, we can also hear what's going on. The S syllables of the live recording contain lots of strong high frequencies, and this makes our stylus movement too fast. On playback, the stylus will probably lose the tracking of the groove for a moment and thus create a distortion. Or, in the worst case, it could lose tracking completely and skip a groove. With the little power button here, we can activate the analog preview signal and toggle between the digital master we added and the analog emulation created by the physical model. The analog emulation signal contains the tracking distortion that is caused by the high velocity of the stylus. This means we can actually judge by ear if the distortion in this part of the track would be audible or not. Based on the visual information from the scope view and the audible information of the preview signal, we can now analyze all issues one by one and then go back to our mastering chain and apply a de cut some high frequencies, drop the level or do whatever we deem necessary. Once we are happy with the result, we can export the whole project. When you select to export an analog lathe master, the software will export a master wave file for each side, a calibration file and a cut sheet which includes all the parameters defined for the project. With this information, the project can then be cut on an analog lathe. This wraps our quick introduction to the perfect groove. We are really excited to finally have it available in the store and are looking forward to any feedback from you. If you like a feature or miss a feature, just let us know and send an email to feedback at perfectgroove.com. Thanks for watching and talk soon.